start to uh, we can start um, the webinar. But Estrella, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our seminar is about to begin. Uh, please have nice uh, uh, connection, hopefully. And thank you very much for uh, having uh, been attending to this seminar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon to you, to you all of uh, you. And we'd like to say bismillah for opening this uh, webinar. His Excellency, the Vice Rector of Research uh, and Development and Partnership, Pak Budi Sucipto, PhD, the Honorable Lecturers of Petroleum Engineering Department of University of Pertamina, and the Honorable All Participants of this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Astra Pramana, the moderator of today's webinar. I'm very pleased to see you all. And welcome all of you to this Sunday webinar. And this seminar is actually conducted by uh, Petroleum Engineering Department and Center of Law Assurance, University of Pertamina. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our uh, speaker today is Professor Bahman, uh, one of the professor in the Herod Wad University and Dr. Ardian Nenkoda uh, from Saudi Aramco. Uh, we would like also to invite uh, the Honorable Vice Rector of uh, Research, uh, Development and Partnership, Pak Budi Sucipto, PhD, to have an opening remarks for our webinar. For Pak Budi, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Astra. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, on behalf of the Universitas Pertamina, we would like to express our gratitude, uh, our thanks to Professor Bahman Tohidi uh, from Heriot Watt University, and also to Dr. Ardia Nengkoda from Saudi Aramco, Saudi Arabia. For being uh, the presenters today for sharing the knowledge about flow assurance. I believe I'm not from uh, petroleum engineering, but as far as I know, flow assurance is a very critical component in the oil and gas industry because it will create consistency uh, of the oil and gas flow. That includes uh, the system, the design, and also the uh, the control. So I believe uh, this uh, or this afternoon session would be very fruitful, very beneficial for everybody. Uh, for that, I also thank uh, for the participants for for uh, joining this uh, Zoom event. Uh, as usual, please uh, take advantage of this because these two uh, experts, our uh, resource uh, persons this afternoon are very rare uh, appearing in our uh, online session. So please take advantage of it and then please ask uh, questions whenever you feel you don't quite get, you don't quite understand uh, what they are presenting so that after the Zoom meeting, you will get additional knowledge you know, about this flow assurance. Uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, being here with us, uh, Professor Bahman, and also Dr. Ardian for sharing uh, you both knowledge with us. Thank you very much again and enjoy the session. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I, I, I hand back to moderator, Dr. Astra. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Pak uh, Budi, for the opening remarks. Uh, before we start, uh, let me tell you the 
uh, regulation that uh, none of you is allowed to uh, to turn on the speakers. Uh, and the, the questions will be question and answer session will be at the end of the two presentations. Okay. Uh, before we start, we would like to invite uh, Professor Bahman Tohidi, and uh, I'd like to read his uh, CV first, so that we will know Professor Bahman' uh, background. Okay. Professor Bahman has more than 30 years of experience in oil and gas industry. He worked as a production engineer for four years before joining Harold Watt University in 1991. Areas of expertise are gas hydrates, flow assurance, wax, asphaltene, salt, emulsion, foam, ADC, and PVT, phase behavior and properties of reservoir fluids, and H2S or CO2 rich systems, production technology and EOR. He has more than 30 years of teaching experience covering relevant topics such as production technology, gas hydrates, and flow assurance. Also, PVT and phase behavior of, of reservoir fluids. He is also a consultant to various oil and gas companies since 1994. He is a managing director of Hydrofac uh, since 2006. He has more than 400 publications and 10 patents. Some of the patents have been commercially commercialized by Hydrofact, such as HydraCheck and HydraFlash. Uh, HydraCheck actually uh, has resulted in 100 million of uh, pounds sterling, saving an extra income for uh, the oil and gas industry, as well as reducing and eliminating use or discharge of harmful, harmful chemicals into the environment. Um, with this hydrocheck, he has played a major role in Herod Watt University and uh, winning the Queen's Universal Anniversary Prizes in 2006. Professor Bahman has been given the International Lifetime Achievement Award at the ninth International Conference on Gas Hydrates in Denver, Colorado in June 2017. Professor Bahman, uh, the floor is yours. Let's welcome Professor Bahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Can you, can you hear sure, me? Sure, sure. We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, it is a pleasure to uh, present in this conference. Um, so the title of my pre presentation is Latest Technology in Mitigation and Online Monitoring for Offshore and Deep Water. So hydrates are similar to ice, but the difference is that they can form a temperature above ice point and the necessary condition for hydrate formation is you need water or ice, suitable size gas molecule and suitable temperature and pressure condition. So the, I switch off my camera, um, the condition for hydrate formation that suitable temperature and pressure condition is represented by this curve. This curve is very important. The first thing a production engineer needs to do to determine this curve. And then the next, it, this can be determined experimentally or um, modeling. So the position of this curve is a function of gas composition and water composition. Gas composition, the rounder and 
bigger gas molecule, the higher the interaction and easier to form hydrate. So a compound like cyclopentane is ideal for hydrate formation. But a compound like nitrogen is not very good as far as hydrate formation is concerned because nitrogen is a small molecule and the interaction would be very little. So one is composition of gas molecule. The other factor is composition of water molecule. Anything dissolved in water means that some water molecules are busy dissolving it. So then less water molecule will be available for hydrate formation. We use this property by for preventing hydrate formation. If we add methanol or glycol, that will be dissolved in water. And as a result, it is more difficult to form hydrate. And here you can see um, a video as a rocking cell, visual rocking cell shows hydrate formation simulating a pipeline condition that hydrate can form at the interface. And then normally because hydrate is solid material preventing mass transfer. So the lower part, you see that hydrates have not formed, but when you restart the pipeline, that will be mixed and can form hydrate. Here shows the interaction between two molecules. You see that when they are far apart, the interaction is very little. When they get closer to each other, they attract each other. When they get too close to each other, they repair each other. That is the simulating this molecule, the gas molecule and the host molecule. <clears throat> now, how to evaluate hydrate risk? The first need to determine the hydrate phase boundary. And we normally consider a safety margin and safety margin normally is three to five degrees. So this is actual hydrate phase boundary. And if we take safety margin, that would be hydrate margin. And we basically use this one for our design. And this is the safety margin. That's, this is one approach. The other approach is that we need to determine the um, and the pipeline condition. And pipeline condition, we can apply the safety margin to pipeline condition or hydrate phase boundary. Here you see that we apply the pipeline condition is this condition. We assume safety margin here, three to five degrees, and then shift this line um, to the left. So we assume is more severe condition. So we can apply shifting the phase boundary to the right or shifting the uh, pipeline condition to the left. Most companies assume phase boundary change. The intersection of pi um, phase envelope of hydrate and pipeline condition will show us what is the condition and whether there is any risk of hydrate formation. For example, this um, development in South Pars in Persian Gulf, you see that the oil will come here, condensate from here at wellhead condition is hot, but as it's moving toward the shore, exchange heat with the um, water and then become cold and they can go inside hydrate phase boundary. And there, here I am listing various options 
for avoiding hydrate formation. We can remove water, we can control temperature of the pipeline. Theoretically, we can reduce the pressure. We can inject inhibitor injection. We can use low dosage hydrate inhibitor, kinetic hydrate inhibitor, anti or combination of these, or cold flow. Now, normally all these techniques are designed based on worst condition. Worst condition is that when the pressure is the maximum pressure or temperature is minimum temperature and maximum resistance time, how long the fluid would be in the pipeline. But despite all these measure, we see hydrate clocks. So what will change during production? The minimum ambient and pipeline temperature changes on a daily or seasonal basis. So we normally don't take into account. Reservoir pressure will change. If the reservoir pressure changes, the pipeline pressure will change. But we don't take that into account. Water cut changes, and that could affect hydrate inhibitor, require hydrate inhibition uh, concentration. Formation water may be produced. Formation, formation water will have some salt. Salt will reduce activity of water. So it is more difficult for hydrate to form when we have salt. And inhibitor in water is important. So inhibitor moving to the gas phase or um, liquid hydrocarbon phase will not prevent hydrate formation. So that is a loss and that can change. And then inhibitor injection pump may you know, have some problem or uh, shut down or human error. They can result in hydrate formation or inhibitor that we uh, get may not be based on our specification. For example, we want 80% meg, but we have 70% meg. So all of these can result in hydrate problem. Normally, we don't change uh, the inhibitor rate injection. And the, um, for example, inhibitor injection, we inject inhibit KH, KHI in late autumn and all winter and early spring, spring but always in the same rate. While we don't need as much in the early autumn, the temperature is milder than winter. So we need less inhibitor. Design of inhibitor is based on maximum condition, uh, worse condition, and that is not realistic. All of these will result in using too much inhibitor and the cost to the operator and environmental impact. Here, we want to discuss a new concept that monitor how much inhibitor we have and how much inhibitor we need. So how we can do that? You remember the hydrate phase boundary is a function of uh, gas composition and water composition. Now, the hydrocarbon composition normally doesn't change. What will change is water composition. So if I find a technique that can provide water composition quickly, then I can plot this curve because I know hydrocarbon composition. 
on the pipeline condition, we either, either have some uh, modeling or we have some sensor. So we can estimate pipeline condition. So if you can plot these two against each other, then we see that we can define a safety margin. We want to be outside hydrate phase boundary. Ideally, we want three to five degree to be outside hydrate phase boundary. You can send the sample to lab, to your onshore lab, but this will take time and it might take uh, half a day or one day or more one day to get the composition of water phase. And that it can be uh, too late to respond. So despite all these measures, we can have risk of hydrate formation. And if you forget about hydrate formation, this is provide an extra um, factor by measuring actual concentration of inhibitor. Now, we develop a technology that we call it HydroCheck. Uh, this technology is here, shown here, the device is here. It was a university um, project that we commercialized as HydroFact, and many old companies are using it at the moment. And here we measure electrical conductivity of water and a speed of sound in the water. So measure electrical conductivity and a speed of sound and temperature as well. And from these two parameter, like two equation, two unknowns, we can find salt inhibitor concentration or salt, KHI concentration, or salt and MEG concentration. So the benefit here, you get this water composition, but in five seconds. So is it like real time measurement? So you have time to implement your collective step. So knowing the aqueous phase composition, knowing the hydrocarbon composition, we put it in our software or any other software, we can plot hydrate phase boundary. And knowing pipeline condition, then we can say whether we are inside hydrate phase boundary or we are outside. For example, if you, the hydrate phase boundary is this, you know, based on the calculation we have here, then there is a risk of hydrate formation. So we need to increase the amount of inhibitor. If the hydrate phase boundary, when we increase hydrate phase boundary on this yellow line, then there is safety margin is very little. We want to have a desired the safety margin, as I said, three to five degrees. If the hydrate phase boundary is here, this is ideal because we have the safety margin. If hydrate phase boundary is here, then we are over inhibiting the system and that will cost us more and we damage the environment. And, you know, we want to avoid it. So we have, this device has been implemented in many companies. And here is an example that we, with this nugget field in the North Sea, they were using 28% inhibitor and we reduce it to, um, 4%, less than 5%, in fact, 4%. So that was a huge saving. Later on, the amount of water production uh, reached its maximum. And then we couldn't inject the necessary amount of inhibitor. 
But because formation water was produced and the formation water is itself the hydrate preventer, the um, company decided to not to inject the inhibitor, but monitor the amount of hydrate form. So this is the first time that we can monitor and operate inside hydrate phase boundary. So we tested the system, how much hydrate we can have in the system and, and it, it doesn't block. And the result was around 20% for that system. So we put the safety margin up to 10% uh, hydrate. If up to 10%, we, we are okay. You know that hydrate will exclude any foreign material. So the salt will be in, excluded, excluded from hydrate structure. So if hydrate form, the concentration of salt in the remaining water will change. By monitoring the uh, concentration of salt, we could determine the amount of hydrate in the slurry. For example, if the con concentration of salt is four and a half percent, and 10% of that water become hydrate, the concentration of salt in the remaining water become 5%. And we monitor that. And we, not, we won't let the concentration of uh, hydrate to increase by reducing the pipeline pressure or injecting some inhibitor. But we keep it that. Condition. This is the condition actually. This is the gas production, and this is the amount of water, water cut. We couldn't inject enough inhibitor to match 700 um, cubic meter of water per day. <clears throat> so we decided to operate inside hydrate phase boundary and then. We measure the amount of uh, hydrate slurry in the system. And with this technique, we could detect if hydrate too much hydrate 24 to 48 hours before blockage. And we were able to operate inside hydrate phase boundary, minimizing in inhibitor injection, in fact, removing inhibitor injection and minimizing contamination of the product because methanol is destroy the catalyst and uh, you, you have to pay extra money for removing methanol. <clears throat> so this resulted in all company total producing more than 5 billion million barrel of oil equivalent and the extra income more than 100, 150 million pound that we um, got award from the um, Queen's Award, we won, won Queen's Award for the innovation and reducing damage to the environment and extending the life of uh, well by, when that paper is written three years, but in fact work, this technique will work for um, five years in total. And uh, the, um, extra income. Now, then this is an online hydro check. The same concept is online that the system will take sample, measure the amount of inhibitor, send the control room, and then you can adjust the amount, amount of inhibitor. <clears throat> um, hydro check has been deployed uh, in 2008 and resulted um, the uh, monitoring 
the uh, uh, this is another case uh, endorphin energy and the paper has been published i can send it to you and here we replace and the uh, the conventional monitoring which is time consuming staff requirement by very simple technique so now here is the several um, case studies that if you are interested, I can send to you. And then these are the publication on this technique. Other application, we can also, the system can detect formation water production. Um, you know, we can monitor uh, low dosage height inhibitor in produce or disposal water. Sometimes we don't know how much water we are producing by um, having this system. We can, because we are injecting a certain rate, by measuring the rate in the produced water, we can say that how much water is being produced with the gas or uh, with the oil. And also monitoring uh, performance of make regeneration or tag in the um, dehydration. We can also integrate with multiphase flow because multiphase flow is very um, sensitive to amount of salt in the um, produced water and therefore we can um, find the right correlation. If you are interested, I can explain more. And we can, as, as you uh, showed earlier, we can detect the amount of hydrate fall. The other technique that um, I would like to mention is detecting early signs of hydrate formation. Now, you see that this figure shows the tendency of different component for forming hydrate. You see that H2S is very strong hydrate former. And after that is IC4, and then C3, and then C2, and then CO2, you know, C1. And then you see that nitrogen is not very good. So when hydrate form, some component will be trapped in hydrate more than other components. And that will result in the reduction in the composition of that compound in the gas phase. And if when the gas, we know that the gas is the fastest moving phase. So if you monitor the gas composition, it's an example, 10% hydrate, you see that the amount of gas uh, you know, the component propane and isobutane in the, uh, in the um, feed. And if you form hydrate, that is in the gas phase. And we use ratio and we can see hydrate formation. And here is a phase, uh, there is a case study. Um, uh, I'm a bit speeding up my presentation. This is a case study again tested by total high water cut uh, they moved to uh, antiacromanin and then they, they put it online gc and then from uh, that we can see when hydrate is forming you see that when this is c1 to c3 ratio if hydrate form concentration of c3 is reduced Therefore, this ratio will go up. When hydrate is melting, this goes down and then goes up, goes down. And then we notice that this is every 12, 12 hours. We notice that during the night, hydrate is forming. During the day, because temperature increases, hydrate is melting. And this happened only around 10 days in, per year. But they were injecting antiagromanin the whole year. So we can we don't need antiagromanin injection uh, the whole year. 
We just need 10 days. So that can result in significant reduction in the KHIC. So how to implement this? So imagine that you have a separator. So you get the gas, you get the oil, you get the water, water goes to the gasser, and we can monitor gas composition and gas composition uh, we show the first sign of hydrate formation, and then the water containing hydrate come to the separator, and then the, uh, the reduce the pressure in water degasser, and we can monitor the um, confirmation of hydrate formation from monitoring the composition of water um, from the degasser. Even we can say where is hydrate is forming. And if you're interested, I can explain that. So we can integrate the, both of these techniques. Hydrate check, we show us the safety margin. Hydrate sense, we detect hydrate formation. So here you have a gas phase. Here you have the gas phase, you monitor the GC. And the water, which doesn't have any gas, will help the hydrate check. So with water here, we detect hydrate phase boundary. And then with hydrate sense, we detect early signs of hydrate formation. So we have developed and field tested the following technology, uh, hydrate check for monitoring hydrate phase boundary. Here should be hydrate sense, a spelling error for detecting early signs of hydrate formation. And we have very strong um, software um, because we, we are the only software um, technology um, that we have access to our own lab. And we can support this technology that I mentioned around the world. And these are the hydrofact activity, consultancy, training, experimental equipment, software, and technology transfer, hydrate check, and KHI evaluation and testing, and other technology like hydrosense. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I hope I didn't go too much over my time. And I would like to thank uh, you for the invitation and Dr. Atia for his constant support. And I would like to um, thank to our sponsor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Bahman, for very interesting uh, presentation. And I just want to mention that uh, it's really important to have a safety uh, margin, yeah? to know the best safety margin as uh, previously uh, explained by Professor Bahman. And of course, instead of having an uh, inhibitor for one complete years, yeah, if we can predict uh, the occurrence of these hydrates, then probably which is uh, only 10 days, we can uh, put the inhibitor only for probably 10 days also. So it's really interesting to know that this uh, knowledge is really important, predicting it, it's really important and save a lot of money, a lot of effort and so on. Yeah, that's uh, uh, the one that we get lots of things, but I just mentioned one of it. Uh, the next one, uh, our uh, next presenter is uh, Dr. Adrian uh, Nenkoda. Yeah, Dr. Adrian Nenkoda uh, is, let me just uh, share my screen. Yeah, Dr. Adrian, uh, Ardian Nenkoda is a recipient of multiple international award winning 2015 SPE regional projects, facilities and construction award uh, in Abu Dhabi, UAE. In 2014, uh, he has, uh, he got the Gas Processor Association Award in San Antonio, Texas. And 2011, SPE Middle East Projects and Facilities Challenges Award in Doha, Qatar. Dr. Ardian holds PhD degree in chemical engineering and has more than 
23 years of experiences in oil and gas industry. Currently, uh, currently uh, he's working as Petroleum Engineering Group lead, especially in gas facilities development of Saudi Aramco and serving as additional committee for Society of Petroleum Engineering, SPE International Journal of Petroleum Technology, or we know it as JPT, and is also a technical advisor for offshore facilities. Dr. Ardian expertise are in the area of field development, production technology, chemistry, law assurance, facilities engineering, subsea and project management. Uh, for Dr. Ardian, uh, uh, it's your uh, the floor is yours now. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Agus. I wish everyone can hear my uh, voice right now. It's clear, clear, Doctor. Okay, all right. So, so thank you so much for the uh, invitation from the Pertamina University. The management really appreciate for these invitations, and also including my colleague uh, Professor Bahman Tohidi from uh, Heriot Watt University, uh, Scotland. So let me uh, share my screen right now. So if somebody can help, uh, you know, to give a permission for me to. Just one second first. Yeah, I think I think it looks like okay now. Let me share my screen. Okay, I, I hope it's good now. Yeah, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here with all of you. Uh, let me present my technical presentations with the title of the prospect of flow assurance or in advance of system engineering for Indonesia oil and gas industry. So currently I'm a SPE GPD editor committee member and also I work for gas development in Saudi Aramco. So as a reminder, of course, it's good to, 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 to be here with all of you and then please do not forget to protect yourself and then follow the health protocol during this COVID-19 pandemic. So of course, this is, this is a, a, a global situation. And then I think all of us has a responsibility to make sure that you know, ourselves, our family, our environment is safe and healthy. So just to encourage everyone and also myself you know, to remind that you know, COVID-19 is a really global pandemic. It's a true fact and that we need to stay safe and healthy. Next. The outline of my presentations, I will explain why oil and gas. You know, it's, it's quite very important to make sure that we have a common understanding where oil and gas, you know, still you know, need by all of us, by, by everyone, by our industry, to, to, to make sure that our economy is running. And then number two, I will share a little bit of background about the implication of the pandemic. And then the third, I will share about why flow estron, what is the flow estron, what is the system engineering, and then what kind of applications that we can consider it, and then what kind of prospect that can be applied for Indonesia in very specific oil and gas industry. And then during my presentations, I will share also about the exploration and production of life cycle, how the flow estron, how the system engineering can help uh, start from the beginning of the project until the uh, design, until you know the operation and so on. And then as mentioned by Professor Bahman before, 
I will a little bit touch on the uh, possible technology solution that quite very demanding right now within our industry. And then last but not least, I will share some of the important points uh, as a highlight for, from my presentation. All right, so let us start you know, our discussions. Why oil and gas, right? So this one is quite very you know, interesting. Why, why, why oil and gas? So basically we need to admit that currently there is a trend of the energy transitions, right? There is a demand about more environmental technology focus. There is also a demand about the renewable energy and so on. But we need to make sure that, you know, we still need, you know, this fossil oil. We still need oil and gas. So first of all, of course, the reason why oil and gas industry is still demanding from now until maybe 30 or 50 years ahead is because it's mainly as a country income. It's a benefit for the country as an economic driver. And then number two, the second consideration is why we still need oil and gas source. Like Indonesia, for, for example, Indonesia need oil and gas as, you know, as a feed for the industry, as a, you know, for, for, for the people, for the mobility and so on. So a strategic resource and energy source, oil and gas, is because oil is the most important raw materials that we have. So every day, the way we live, the way we use our you know, resource is also still depending on oil and gas. And then of course, the, the, the last thing that we need to consider is oil and gas are very important for the number of jobs you know, that, 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 that can be provided from the industry. So a lot of people enjoying the benefit of the economy direct indirect on the energy supply. As you know that around two weeks ago, there was a, you know, a snow storm hit in the Texas, uh, one of the center, you know, oil uh, in the world. And then yesterday, you know, before the weekend, we have seen together where the oil price are increased quite very dramatic to the level around 65 US dollar per barrel for the oil brand. So there is a sign where the oil and gas industry start to be, you know, to pick up back to normal again. So let us think why, you know, why oil and gas still important for our life. Of course, you know, if we take a look on the physics of the crude oil, for example, you know, one, uh, uh, you know, barrel of oil consists around 60% for the petrol, BBM or diesel, marine fuel and so on. But don't forget that the rest of the 40% of the one barrel of oil are very useful for wax, lubricant, petrochemical, jet fuel, asphalt, and so on and so on. So, so we have a common understanding where one barrel of oil is, is, is there is no replacement in fit for the purpose. So, so we still need oil and gas in terms of the uh, energy sources and also for the uh, material chemical sources. And then if we take a look a little bit about the, uh, what is the, 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 the contribution of the natural gas, mainly natural gas contributed for our you know, industry, for the heating, for the, uh, you know, for the uh, a car or, or, or vehicle, a, a source or, 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 or fuel, but also natural gas is contributing to a petrochemical or fertilizer. So we have seen, you know, based on the uh, physics of oil and gas, you know, is really contributing in our life. So, uh, you know, for, for, for the past one year, we have seen together a, a, a global, you know, phenomena is, is, is pandemic, right? So it's really hurt and hitting the energy system globally, not only for Indonesia, but also across the world. So what we found as a lesson learned so far, number one, the oil and gas and energy security remain a cornerstone of the global economy, especially during this turbulent time. So, so oil and gas is one of the key, you know, a, a, a source that can, you know, a, a, a improve and then, and, then, and then increase the economy around the world. And then number two, what we have seen so far is energy will become the center of economic recovery. Number three, the pandemic itself is pushing our industry, the oil and gas industry, to have a new skill set, you know, the ICT, IR 4.0, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on, to better improve the business process. So, so that's the key that, that we have seen so far 
as a trend, as new trend, you know, uh, after after the pause of, of, of this pandemic. And then, as mentioned by Professor Bahman before, we need to take a look how the flow assurance as a subject matter can give a benefit or can give a support to our life, especially on the oil and gas, you know, project operation, and maybe the applications on this subject outside of the oil and gas industry. So basically, if we take a look on the history, the flow assurance as a term, as a sentence, as a wording, it is it, born around 1990, where there is a lot of project in offshore Brazil, in the in the in the in salt basin, in, in the pre-salt, a lot of project over there. And then unfortunately, the project or the operation of this deep water created a lot of challenge, a lot of wax challenges, asphaltine, hydrate, as mentioned by Professor Bahman before. So, so, so in, in, in nutshell, the flow assurance is the ability to produce the fluids economically from the reservoir to a production facility over the field life in any environment. And then of course, you know, it's, it's quite very challenging because we have seen a problem related to a hydrate, to the a in inorganic scale, wax, asphaltine deposition, and so on. So, 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 so this is the, 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 the phenomena where it become a global, very challenging to tackle, uh, you know, right from the beginning. So, so a lot of response that's coming from our industry. So especially, you know, when we talk about the flow as run, we talk from the uh, bottom hole, from the reservoir near well bore, up to the wellhead and then all the way to the uh, processing facility or and you know a customer facility so to produce and transport the fluids from the port to you know for the port throat of reservoir to the host facility so so that was the the how typically flow assurance are applied and then of course is is required a structural engineering analysis process which is not really straightforward and then you know, ev you know, whenever we forgot about the important things of the flow as run, the problem might happen, and then this problem might very cost, very costly for 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 the industry. So so it's quite very challenging. It, the industry respond this phenomena very well, and then there is a lot of progress, a lot of research, a lot of you know technology have been deployed, and then nowadays become popular because it's not really easy to, to, to find out oil and gas reserve. Currently, we um, go you know, very frequent to offshore, to deep water, and also we, we frequently apply you know, enhanced oil recovery. We, 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 in some case, we face you know, the heavy oil exploration and production. So, so after all, the flow as run as a term has become popular you know, every year. So there is a new new term actually nowadays that apparently based on the consensus around the industry across the academia researcher, you know that the flow echelon cannot be deployed as a single you know discipline. So it should come from a system engineering approach. So the flow echelon, of course, we are talking about the multi-phase flow, and then we will talk about the, how we can manage material, how we can improve the design process. And then in some of the case, we need to think about the fluid characterizations and then the fluid change, how the precipitation will be. So the modeling also involves. So nowadays, the industry are moving from the a specific production chemistry issue or flow estrogen issue, wax, asphaltine, or gas hydrate challenges to be more to system engineering wise. So, so this is the subject where, where it's growing right now. And then the continuous effort, the link between the industry, the academia, the a, a research center are, are, are jointly work together to tackle this global issue. Next, the very basic question is, are there any flow assurance challenges in Indonesia, right? So let us take a look. If, if, if we, you know, uh, putting back in the perspective, Indonesia. Uh, let's say around 100 years ago. So, so we as a country, Indonesia, already familiar with the uh, oil and gas processing. 
and then uh, back to year 1997, year 2000, Indonesia is one of the biggest oil, you know, uh, 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 LNG exporter in the world, and the Indonesia already, you know, has achieved the uh, plateau around 1.6 million oil barrel per day, back to you know 1997 and also year 2000. So, so, so basically, uh, there's a lot of challenge, right, in in, in Indonesia right now. The uh, SK Chemigas has a plan to uh, achieve or to increase the oil production target to the level of 1 million oil barrel per day, and then to achieve around 12 BSCFD gas until 2030. So, so this is a quite very massive program from the government of Indonesia. And then, you know, from the uh, Western part up to the Eastern part, uh, there is a lot of, you know, project currently ongoing. It's not only oil and gas, but also including a unconventional, including the geothermal and so on and so on. So I will show you later how the flow assurance can be also applied in the a water or, or geothermal industry. So this is the 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 a. Uh, how the, the prospect of, of the oil and gas uh, industry can be, you know, can be applied in terms of the flow assurance. So the, so the flow assurance uh, is, is talking about the system operability and integrity. And then of course, it can be applied in oil and gas, you know, as a whole from the wells, from the uh, drilling, from the operation, processing, transportations, and so on but also not limited to geothermal. So in geothermal, we have seen a lot of inorganic scale deposition challenges uh, in, in, in the operations. And then of course the a solution itself, it will require some of the chemical, some of the research and development. So, 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 so flow assurance can be you know, uh, produced uh, from the a, a, a laboratory or from the chemical company. And then and don't forget that, you know, the, the recent situations where the wind turbine, some of the wind turbine during the freezing, you know, winter situations in US or across the world also has some challenges in terms of the freezing, you know, stopping the, 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 the turbine itself. So, so the flow insurance concept as a system engineering wise can be applied in, in, in many or various you know, uh, industry application. So this slide explain about the a uh, possible flow assurance challenges in Indonesia oil and gas uh, from the western, you know, to a uh, eastern part of the country. Of course, we have seen, you know, the the project like a Masela development or like Natuna. Uh, it will it will have uh, for sure a lot of challenge related to the flow assurance especially on the deep water and offshore locations area. And then like Madura, Terang Sirasun, uh, Gajah Baru, Natuna, Ruby. So, so this is one of the example where the possible flow S run might be a challenge for this project. So uh, we are very confident that the flow S runs uh, is not the one and only challenges, but it can be tackled by a systematic approach. And then this slide explained very well about how the, uh, uh, the upstream exploration and production life cycle will be. So the common you know, uh, period required for the project can be ferry between five to six years. So typically during the process of the uh, discovery, uh, uh, you know, it will take around one to two years and then, of course, there is some blockage challenges, right? So there is some, you know, drilling challenges related to the scale, paraffinic or, 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 or a, a wax challenges that might drilling face during their operations. So, so during the evaluation, seismic uh, exploration, uh, the development, that was the, 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 the opportunity where we can design the flow assurance strategy we can design the control, we can design a solution, how to avoid a uh, wax problems, how to avoid corrosion problems and so on. So, so, so that was the opportunity where, where the flow as run can be applied during start from the beginning of the project 
until the operation development, the production until the abandonment. So the flow action in nutshell can be applied right from the beginning until to the abandonment of the field. So this is an example of the how the flow assurance applications during the oil and gas field life. So first of all, of course, during the uh, uh, sampling, during the PVT campaign, we can characterize the fluid, we can analyze it, and then we can get some information regarding the properties, the physics, the compositions, and also the uh, characteristic of the fluid itself by the changing of the pressure or temperature. So as you can see over here that the flow assurance can be applied everywhere during the project life or, or during the field life. So, so, so in the end of the day, the uh, flow assurance uh, uh, strategy can also contribute to the OPEX, the operation you know, expenditure and also the capital expenditure. So this is the magnitude how the flow assurance are contributing to the uh, oil and gas field life cycle. So let me give you a very interesting you know, a, a, a statistic. So according to the EY, the Ernst and Young back to 2014, a lot of oil and gas major project, the mega project are being delayed. So, so it's quite very interesting, right? So, so why, what is the reason why some of the uh, mega project are delayed? So based on the uh, research back to 2014, it turned out that people and organizations are contributing to the delay of the project. So around 65% of the contribution to the uh, delay of the project. While contracting, the procurement are around 21% and external factor around 40%. You know, percent. So we have a feeling over here, very firm that if we design wrongly, or if we do not have an expertise or skill sets, how to design the flow as run, how to design the facility, you know, the, the impact can be large. That is something, you know, get wrong, right? So first of all, of course, the incorrect system design, unnecessary operating strategy, potential flow blockage, resulting in the, you know, the production, you know, uh, shutdown or development, consequential revenue loss, right? So in the extreme case, loss of, you know, uh, uh, asset, you know, it, it, it can be very dangerous. If you take a look, one of the learning of the mercury corrosion attack in Algeria or in Australia, the result is tremendous, you know, it's disaster, right? So understanding the flow assurance is very important for our industry. Next, this is you know the best practices that I can share to all of you, how the concept selections, how the facilities, how the operation strategy, how the productions, you know, a strategy can get a benefit from the flow assurance. So, so of course, during the field life, we, we, we need to consider the environment, we need to understand the reservoir, the, we need to quantify the uncertainty. We need to understand how we would like to perform the drilling. And then of course we need to propose an option and examine any you know, uh, facilities that can be applied to make sure that the, the, the project are economics. And then in the end of the day, the flow assurance always there. So, so this is the things where, 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 where we need to admit that flow assurance can give an impact to every stage of the oil and gas development. So let us you know, share a little bit what kind of technology solutions that can be you know, considered for the oil and gas industry, for geothermal, for unconventional, for any industry, right? So, so in, in, in the concept is there. First, of course, you know, if you take a look, the graph over here, this is the data that you know, I collected uh, 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 with the uh, Eskakami gas with the government of Indonesia that if you take a look on the breakdown of the unplanned shutdown for oil industry, uh, you know, uh, more than, you know, 83% uh, because of the production and facility problem. So, so, so most likely the flow assurance is there, the, the, the challenge is there. So this is just to give everyone an emphasize that, you know, is the, 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 the problem is really exists in Indonesia and then we need 
to have a collaborative effort from from all party to solve this problem and then to support the 1 million barrel oil per day targets from the government so of course some of the possible technology are exist one of the example is we need to think how we can safely you know, environmentally handling the fluid issue uh, can we apply such as chemical like kinetic or or khi or low dosage hydrate inhibitor to inhibit gas hydrate problems as mentioned by professor bahman before or can we apply the heat retention insulation passive you know approach can we also you know a, a, a separate the liquid you know safely or recombine like subsidy type back and so on so this is one of the idea what kind of technology which is already available in the market or maybe there is a new novel technology solutions that we can find together as a solution for our oil and gas industry so so yeah after all what is the conclusion first of all the flow assurance you know describe a phenomena of the precipitation a blockage right either a solid a liquid a gas and then it's in, the interaction is, is massive it can create a blockage or corrosion leaking right and then it can also including the operational fluid phase problems so these technical solutions you know uh, sometimes is less cost you know uh, we need to think the impact the risk and so on and then this is the, the, the subject is very important for for the, for the oil and gas industry number two nowadays the flow assurance or system engineering can offer an integrated solution not only to oil and gas but also including geothermal industry renewable industry and so on so the future prospect applications of this flow assurance or system engineering is really demanding number three if we would like to solve any problem the best approach is integrated workflow so understanding better the physical, the chemistry of the fluid is very important. And then we need to make sure that the transport of the, you know, the, the fluid, oil, gas from the reservoir to the end journey is very important. Last, finally, as a finding, basic reservoir fluid information can be linked to the future production problems. So, 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 so the flow assurance study has an important role in maximizing the productions and minimizing the facility bottlenecking. Thank you so much. That's all for my presentation. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Ardian, for a very nice uh, explanation or description on flow assurance and the problems in Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, I would like also to open the question and answer session. Uh, I'd like to share uh, my, my uh, uh, PowerPoint, please. Uh, can I please uh, have my PowerPoint? Okay. Hello? Yeah. Just one second. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, kindly write it down on the chat uh, area so that I can read it. But uh, there are about 10, 15 questions previously sent to us. So let me just write or let me just uh, read some of the questions given by uh, the previously, yeah. Okay. Um, let me just read it, the first one. Uh, this one actually has been explained. Uh, he's asking about the mitigation of hydrate formation and what's the software to identify and solve hydrate formation. This is from Laili Yawati, student of University of Pertamina. I think this question to Professor Bahman. Okay, uh, Professor Bahman, probably yeah. you. Uh, you could uh, explain about or answer the question? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your question. 
basically what we need to do first, we need to predict hydrate phase boundary, or we need to experimentally measure hydrate phase boundary. And that is uh, using the software or experimental equipment or both of them. I mean, we had a project in um, Angola um, and we, although we were happy that the software is good, but uh, because of the size of the project, the client wanted us to, to test it, to test, find out the hydrate phase boundary experimentally. So we did both of them. Once you know the hydrate phase boundary, that basically you need a good um, predictive model uh, or good experimental. Obviously, experimental is a lot more expensive than prediction. And, you know, experiment and software, they should go hand in hand because um, software is not exact um, presentation of real system. So you need some experimental data to tune your software. And that will make you very accurate in predicting the hydrate phase boundary. Then you need to look at the pipeline condition. And the pipeline condition, you can uh, do some simulation like Olga simulation, or you have definitely you will have some uh, te temperature uh, read, uh, probe. You need some pressure data. You can superimpose these two together. And then you know whether you are inside hydrate phase boundary or outside hydrate phase boundary. If you are in outside, it is important to see that how far you are outside. Because if you are using chemical, you can reduce the chemical. If you are inside, you need to optimize inhibitor injection. Because when you inject inhibitor, that inhibitor is a chemical. And that chemical will affect your water. And then how to dispose this water is very important. So you need to uh, minimize the amount of inhibitor. But you might be worried that hydrate may form. Then you need a device to detect this hydrate is forming. And combination of these two techniques, that is monitoring the amount of inhibitor, the risk of uh, and detecting early signs of um, hydrate formation, they can go hand in hand to minimize inhibitor injection, inhibitor usage, protect environment, and make the project very cost-effective. And if you need more information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Bahman. So, uh... We need software, hardware, and also uh, um, uh, some knowledge also that uh, we can, uh, the, the inhibitor, we can actually control it. Uh, isn't it, uh, Dr. Bahman, Professor yes, Bahman? Yes, exactly, exactly. And, you know, I, I don't want to be, um, um, but what I want to say, if you think you have hydrate problem or you want to protect against hydrate problem, please leave it to us. We will be happy to take care of our hydrate problem and train your staff and we remove that worry from your production system. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. Uh... Thanks a lot, Professor Bahman. Okay, uh, the next question actually is asking about, uh, um, this is actually for uh, Dr. Ardian. Is there any scholarship or, or research fund for researchers, researchers in the petroleum engineering group uh, for Saudi Aramco? 
This is actually asked by uh, Suprihatin from UTS, lecturer at UTS. Uh, okay. Uh, something related with uh, research. Nih. Okay. Probably Dr. Ardian, can you yeah. please just... Uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, thank you so yeah. much for, for the questions. So actually, uh, it's not only, you know, Saudi Aramco, but also overall, most of the oil and gas industry, we are really concerned about the flow assurance, right? So we need to make sure that the uh, our our project or our field are can be you know uh, uh, useful and then can be utilized in their envelope to be able to produce our you know our fluid and then in the end it will be accepted in our end user. So, so of course, Saudi Aramco and then the rest of oil and gas industry, we have a lot of, you know, a joint industrial project around the world with the uh, best uh, a, a laboratory or best university uh, to tackle some of the issue related to the flow assurance. The answer is yes. So, so, so the company and then the other oil and gas industry, the, the company, the, 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 the academia, the research center, we have a lot of uh, joint industry project uh, related to the subject of flow assurance. Okay, okay, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Ardian. The next question actually is uh, to either uh, Dr. Ardian or Professor Bahman. Uh, it's from uh, Dadang Sudarna, from a lecturer from Unpad. Probably mistakenly written unpad or umpap. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Is but the question is how to protect the blowing up of wild gas. Uh, he's asking about the gas uh, okay. blowing, yeah, in the pipe, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's blowing up. Uh, I don't know whether Dr. Ardian or Professor yeah. Bahman. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so if I can help, maybe uh, try to understand the question more. Uh, the question may be related to the a uh, how we can manage the a uh, gas blowout, something like that. So basically, the gas blowout might happen during the explorations, during the uh, drilling activities, or maybe it might also happen during operation, during day-to-day -day operation. But unfortunately, there is some catastrophe happen, like corrosion or 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 struck with other object and then it's uncontrollable, right? And then the gas will become blow out. So I think uh, the, 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 the solution is not always necessary related to a flow assurance, uh, depending on the a root cause or nature. Like if you take a look on the previous a uh, Macondo events in a uh, Gulf of Mexico, uh, you know, it's it's, can, and, and, and it's a catastrophic because you know there is some you know a casing problem or drilling <laughs> problem. So so the, the the solution is not always related to the flow assurance. Of course, mainly the, the solution related to the a kill well. So so, so by using the a, a BOP or by using the, a heavy mud, you know, uh, to kill or control the wells. So it's not really necessary related to the flow assurance. Uh, but of course, in terms of the flow assurance, if the corrosion is happen, uh, the most important thing is to uh, contain the system safely by using a BOP or a shutdown system, something like that. So I wish that answered the question. One point, one yeah. point, if I may, want to add to yeah. what uh, Adrian said is that. You know, if you get a hydrate blockage, dealing with that hydrate blockage is a very clever and, you know, technique. And if you don't deal with the hydrate blockage properly, then you can have a pipeline or well, well had this um, explosion because uh, hydrate is similar to ice. <coughs> and if you want to remove hydrate, 
there are various techniques. The most um, popular technique is uh, reducing the pressure. When you reduce the pressure, then the hydrate, because heat comes from a perimeter of the pipeline, the hydrate will melt in the perimeter and the pressure difference can result in hydrate moving. And that can result in pipeline rupture and blowout. So I, I hope you won't have hydrate blockage, but if you have hydrate blockage, you need to consult with a, a specialist to how safely remove that blockage. So as far as uh, blowout you mentioned, with respect to hydrate, this can happen when we have a blockage in a pipeline. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Bahman and Dr. Ardian. Okay, uh, another question actually from Fatikul Ihsan from AP Pertamina Hulu Indonesia. Uh, it's written in Indonesia. Mohon dijelaskan proses flow assurance menjadikan standar dan prosedur yang telah diterapkan di industri migas. Yeah. Could you please explain about flow assurance, whether it's a procedure and a, or SOP standard of, of procedure, which is uh, applied in the uh, oil and gas industry? I didn't get the question. Yeah. Um, you want to repeat again? Uh, yeah, let me just repeat again, but I'm translating it into English. So uh, please describe about flow assurance standard and procedure in the oil and uh, gas industry. It's probably I'm too wide. <laughs> yeah. The question is too um, wide and uh, not very general. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, flow assurance, as Dr. Etienne mentioned, is a new subject. It started uh, in 1980s from Brazil. The term terminology um, was um, invented by Brazilian, but there are um, various techniques. Basically, the flow assurance means that um, control production of oil and gas from reservoir to end user. Yeah? Control safe production of oil and gas from um, reservoir to um, end user. Then it has many area. It is hydrate, wax, um, asphalting, corrosion, slugging, um, you know, various areas can be regarded as flow assurance. And a standard, we basically need to, the idea is that you need to economically and safely do this job. So a standard depends on what, what flow assurance you are considering. But the overall overarching um, standard or every overarching um, guideline is that needs to be safe, economical, and reliable. That's the all. So if you have corrosion problem, you need to address corrosion problem. If you have hydrate problem, then you need to choose what technique you use for your own pipeline and the amount of inhibitor minimizing dam damage. So this standard depends what flow assurance problem you have. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Bahman. Uh, I do agree. Uh, I support uh, Professor Bahman explanations about is there any international oil and gas standard or best practices specific related to the uh, flow assurance? Uh, Professor Bahman is correct. I concur. 
where in very specific, there is no flow assurance standard. What we have is how to design pipeline, for example, right? So we have a sub C standard API 14E, for example, or we have some process safety guideline, how to design safely the pipeline, the processing facility. Yes, we have the international standard about that. For example, do we have a standard, international standard related to material selections? The answer is yes, we have NACE 17025 standard. So, so in particular of this flow is it, the workflow is, is really state of the art. So that was the challenge, you know, what I found so far. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajya. Okay, Pa Astra. Mungkin masih mute. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, is it okay now? Yes. yes. Hello. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next question actually from uh, Pak Rana Mahdi Rana from Nalco Champion Purnia Jaya Technology. He's asking about throughout this asset life cycle, what is the chemical treatment program for flow assurance aimed at maximizing equipment performance? Um, so it's, yeah. yeah, the chemical, you know that um, we have different chemical for different flow assurance problem. For hydrate, I mentioned the option we have. We have dehydration, we have heating, insulation, uh, chemical, thermodynamic inhibitor, um, kinetic hydrate inhibitor, combination of these, and then cold flow. So, and then for um, corrosion, um, you need to look at the um, you know, chemical you need, what is the risk of corrosion for uh, slugging, you need to look at flow regime for um, emulsion, you need to look at stability of emulsion, maybe uh, inject demulsifier. So you have different chemical for different flow assurance issues. The key point is that you need to check compatibility of these option, these chemical with each other. For example, if you are producing water, saline water, okay? If you inject thermodynamic hydrate inhibitor, thermo, the saline water, uh, the salt will, will come out of the solution and form a salt blockage. So you need to, um, compare them, or the chemical may affect each other. For example, some corrosion inhibitor will impact kinetic hydrate inhibitor. So you need to see that how they work together. So you need to look at um, not, not only the chemical you need, but how these chemicals work together. And that is possible, and um, that's what we are doing. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, to Brahman. Professor Brahman. Thanks a lot for that one. There is another question actually uh, from Pak Hashim. Uh, he's uh, from Pertamina Hulu Mahatam. <laughs> Dear Dr. Ardian Nkoda, thank you for the sharing. In mature field production, it is uh, naturally declining. Could you please advise how to minimize liquid holdup in gas pipeline, which already sized for maximum production rate? Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Agus Astra. So uh, thank you so much for the question, Hashim, from Pertamina East Mahakam. Mahakam yeah. 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 
All right. So basically, this one is quite very common phenomena where during the uh, mid or late life of, of any oil and gas field, the pressure of the reservoir start to decline. And then sometimes the reservoir temperature start to increase. And then we have seen together how the volumetric of the water also increase. So depending on the characteristic of the pressure temperature, which is will you know, drop in a certain way under a certain conditions where the uh, condensate or liquid will be banking, it can be near well bore, or it can be at the uh, you know, downstream of the choke, or it can be all the way in the flow line or trunk line. So, so this is very challenging because it will you know, impact the uh, liquid handling, corrosion strategy, and also including a oil and gas separation strategy. So the best way basically is to apply a, a totally engineering a work to identify the hold up, to identify the impact. And then in the end of the day, the solution can be you know, either chemical or non-chemical, or maybe we need to shut down the wells or the field because the economic or operating impact is very high. So, so that was you know, my, my best advice how we can, you know, managing the strategy. It can be considered such as scrapping or, you know, a pigging to avoid any liquid, you know, hold up within the a lengthy flow line or trunk line. So this is a very challenging phenomena, uh, which is happen everywhere around the world. And then of course, sometime we can, you know, uh, intervene the wells, we can stimulate the wells, we can uh, control the water rate, uh, we can, you know, deploy ICV, we can, you know, uh, a, a, uh, 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 blocking the, the water if possible, uh, you know, mechanically or chemically. So, so that was the, 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 my best advice. Thank you. If I want, if I add one point here, okay, um, multi-phase flow is different from single-phase flow. Single-phase flow, the bigger the pipeline, the better. Multi-phase, no. There is an optimization is important. So when you design a pipeline to be on the safe side, you design it for maximum. Uh, pipeline, minimum pressure drop. But as Dr. Adrian mentioned, later in the life of the reservoir, then you have less flow and then you can have hold up. Most popular technique for removing the hold up in the well is using um, surfactant to uh, make. Um, water in sort of bubble and then transport water to surface. In pipeline, in pipeline, you, the most um, popular technique is using uh, peak, picking every now and then. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Bahman and Dr. Ardian. I wish uh, the answer is clear for Dr. For Pak Hashim from PHM. Okay, the next question actually uh, about um, from from Rinet University of Indonesia. What AI and machine learning tools could be used to forecast and monitor flow assurance problems in surface petroleum production? Yeah, it's quite interesting question actually, asking about AI and machine learning uh, tools. So please, uh, <coughs> Professor Bahman or Dr. Ardian. Yeah. Um, I can maybe add some point here. Machine learning is going to play a major role in our 
flow assurance. Already we have IoT, industrial um, um, internet of things, yeah? And the, that is basically collecting a lot of data and then machine learning, developing logic to predict and prevent and find the bottlenecks. I believe that will be playing a major role as we are moving to um, use the power of computing, power of making logic and is, can result in safer uh, and more economical production of oil and gas. So that is my initial thinking. And the equipment that we um, develop is at the moment is being um, used by a company that is trying to use industrial internet of things. And that be, is, has um, data collection, data analysis, uh, finding um, trends, and we believe that we will play a major role in future. Okay, uh, thanks, Professor. Dr. Ardian, uh, do you wanna give additional answer? Or? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Agus. So I, I concur uh, uh, Professor Bahman, you know, advice uh, in particular on this subject where you know, the AI, the machine learning, the IoT will become trending. We have seen right now, actually, you know, we have a real time a, a modeling. We have a real time a, a predictions on our, for example, hydrates, and then we have a mitigations. And then sometime we are over, you know, injecting some of the chemicals and then by using the real time data or visualizations, it, it will help much in terms of managing the operations, in terms of the uh, managing the capex and opex. So, so, so the AI machine learning will become a trending right now. It's not only in particular of the flow assurance, but also combining the flow assurance to the asset of production facility. So, so at the moment there is a lot of enhancement, a lot of you know industrial leading from some of the engineering or from some of the services or the company where they are trying to integrate the uh, flow s run issue with the production, with the operability, with the assets, with the reservoir, something like that. So, so it's quite very uh, interesting you know, time right now. And then we are looking forward how this technology can help us in managing our asset. And then of course, this is a new skill set that the university or student need to be prepared. So, so yeah, yeah, we are very excited to see how the AI and machine learning, you know, will help us very soon. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ardian. Okay, uh, the next question uh, is actually about uh, from from Pak Bragoba, Bragoba Doli, Pertamina SR Process Facility. Uh, how to simulate a scale deposition in pipeline? How to simulate the scale deposition in pipeline? This is actually a major operation problems in Indonesia. Yeah. Probably Dr. Ardian, uh, since... Uh, yeah. You've been in Indonesia for quite some time, so you know about. Yeah. Okay. Problem. Yeah, I think this 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 question is very valid. Actually, uh, we have seen <clears throat> that you know the water can be accessed right from the beginning of the reservoir, right from the beginning of the field productions, or the water can be accessed and trending increasing sharply during the mid or late life, especially when the BS and NW the water are increased over the time. 
So a lot of uh, commercial and research based on this uh, water in uh, in organic scaling. We will talk about how the chemistry are changing over the time, over the pressure and temperature thermodynamically, and then of course uh, 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 one of the of the common scale are like calcium carbonate or maybe barium sulfate or strontium sulfate. If we have a water injection, if we have a seawater flooding across the reservoir. So the answer is yes, there is some commercial software available. There is some free source, you know, software also available right now in the ground. So, uh, however, the laboratory research need to be there too. To, to tune in the, uh, the, the, the the modeling and then in the same time to find out what kind of chemical inhibitor, what kind of scaling inhibitor can be applied, especially because it's some of the chemical inhibitor is very expensive. Nowadays, uh, also considering such as green chemical application. So I think that's my best advice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Maybe Professor Bahman. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with you. Um, there are three types of scale in general. Um, carbonate, because carbonate and bicarbonate are in equilibrium. Now, high pressure in the reservoir will result in uh, CO2 dissolving in water, and that will form a carbonic acid, and that will dissolve the carbonate. When we produce, the, as we come to surface or in the reservoir, um, what will happen, the pressure reduce, and CO2 will come out of the system, and the equation or the reaction moves to produce more CO2, which result in more carbonate uh, formation. So you can simulate this chemical process. The other type of inhibitor, as uh, Dr. Adrian mentioned, is that the injection of two incompatible fluid together. Seawater has sulfate and formation water has calcium, magnesium, strontium, and they form, the many of they come into contact with each other, they form uh, calcium uh, sulfate, um, barium sulfate, and that result in um, this uh, insoluble salt. And this can be, again, simulated and modeled, um, you need just to consider the um, extra uh, subcooling or extra um, um, energy to that forms in a result in formation of because if you want to nucleate something, you need to have some supersaturation. The third type of scale is halide scale that comes from evaporation of water. A halide uh, uh, scale is uh, NaCl, CaCO2, that normally they are dissolved in water. But when you, um, the concentration of them increases, they have a uh, solubility limit. For example, NaCl can dissolve in water at ambient condition around 25%. If the water evaporate, because pressure reduction, water will evaporate, then you can have um, halite um, NaCl deposition. Or if you have, you inject um, methanol to formation water, methanol is completely miscible, and that will take uh, NaCl out of solution, and you can have uh, that uh, escape formation, uh, halide formation. These are all 
manageable, we have chemical reaction. The key point is that we don't know how much of polyuni. And another key point is that interaction of different um, solids with each other. So another point that we need also to consider the flow dynamic, because flow dynamic can prevent deposition, not precipitation, but, but deposition. So combining flow dynamic and chemical, uh, uh, chemical um, reaction, we can uh, develop the software for predicting the um, escape formation in the pipeline or reservoir or um, production facilities. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Professor Bahman. So uh, by combining the uh, flow dynamics of the fluid on the pipe and also uh, knowing the chemicals uh, inhibitors or anything related with these inhibitors uh, gonna be a good solution. Of course, uh, everything can be simulated in the software. And there are quite many software as mentioned by Dr. Ardian. There's a free software also, and there's a commercial software. So either we start probably from a free one or continue with the uh, commercial as one. But to tell you the truth, uh, we also in the University of Pertamina, the Petroleum Engineering Department, we do have some students uh, doing uh, research on the uh, flow assurance of uh, wax, of scales, of hydrates also. So uh, probably uh, some of you interested on knowing more about these uh, uh, opportunities to do similar or uh, synergistic research with our students and also with the lecturers, that will be very nice as we are actually preparing the center of excellence in flow assurance. And uh, I think uh, the time is actually up. So I'm sorry for uh, any additional questions that uh, lots of you uh, would like uh, to ask many questions to Professor Bahman and Dr. Ardian. But because of the time, we have to uh, uh, stop. Uh, we have to uh, finish this uh, webinar. But before that, we would like to have a, a picture together. Okay, uh, please uh, kindly turn on your uh, um, cameras for the uh, attendance. Please, uh, if you would like also to be. Uh, uh, seen in the uh, in our uh, uh, recorded uh, uh, recorded uh, video then it will be very nice also but if you are uh, same to now <laughs> it's okay okay uh. can um yeah go can, ahead i think i think uh, i will give um sometimes for you to uh, open your camera and put your best smiles. Uh, I will take uh, around four photos because there are a lot of people has joined us today. Yeah, okay. I will start from um, the first, uh, the first one. Uh, Smile and one, two, three. Okay, for another one, don't forget to put your best smiles. Count to three, one, two, three. Okay, another one, the third layer. Mm. Okay, on the third one. Count one, two, three. Okay, the last one. One, two, three. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Back to so, you, Master. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Professor Bahman, Dr. Ardian.
And uh, actually, we would like also to thank for uh, Kementerian uh, of the <laughs> University of Pertamina and also from the sponsor, uh, which is Strive Camp and uh, Global Energy uh, Joint uh, Operation. So it, uh, for also uh, any question about uh, uh, PowerPoint or anything related with this one, you can please kindly contact uh, myself or uh, Department of Petroleum Engineering of University of Pertamina. Again, I uh, would like to appreciate, very much appreciate Professor Bahman uh, from Heriot Watt University and also Dr. Ardian Nkoda from uh, Saudi Aramco. Thank you very Thank you much. So much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bahman. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thank Adrian. you, Adrian. It was, University. Yeah. Thanks a it lot. It was a pleasure. Sir. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks a lot, bye -bye. sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank yeah. you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Dr. Ardian also. Thanks a lot. Makasih banyak, Mbak. Makasih, Pak Astra. Uh, tadi sempat 100 lebih ya. Ya, alhamdulillah sempat 102 apa ya? 103. Iya. Oke. Ya. Ini saya kayaknya sudah nggak ada lagi. Ya. Apakah Oke, okay, thanks. Nanti kalau ininya saya kontak ya Mbak kalau ada yang uh, mau nanya-nanya nanya-nanya tentang flow assurance ini mm -hmm. uh, bisa kontak saya atau uh, nanti saya hubungkan dengan Profesor Bahman. Boleh, siap Pak. Nanti uh, di Munif apa? Instagram IO nanti kita ini juga diinfokan ada yang mau okay. tanya. Thanks a lot. Siap. Assalamualaikum. Sama-sama Bu Eka. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, saya izin untuk uh, end meeting ya semuanya. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Selamat sore.